Okay, so in this video we want to look at um, trend lines, so fitting a trend line to our time series plot. So I mentioned previously that that's just fitting a least squares regression line, which we're already familiar with, and then forecasting. So if the time series plot shows a clear trend, increasing, decreasing, or flat, i.e. no trend, then we can fit a trend line to the plot. And this simply requires that we fit a least squares regression line. When we use the, that trend line or that least squares regression line to make predictions, when it's time series data, we refer to that as forecasting rather than predicting, although it's essentially the same thing. As with any prediction involving extrapolation beyond the range of the data, we need to treat that prediction with caution if we're extrapolating and forecast using a trend line in which the correlation coefficient indicates weak to moderate association should also be treated with caution. So obviously we want as strong a possible correlation as we can get. Um, so that we can assume that our forecasts, even if they are extrapolations, um, might be somewhat reliable, although we would always be cautious about um, extrapolating. Um, obviously, also just speaking more generally, if we're forecasting off the base of, let's say we've got a week's worth of data and we want to make forecasts for the rest of the year, possibly not very reliable. If we have data from a couple of years and we're going to use that to make forecasts, much more reliable. So it's, there's also other factors in terms of how much data are you basing these forecasts on because you know the one week of data that you've got could be quite an anomalous week um, with different things happening for different reasons. Okay so um, some instructions with your CAS using CAS to fit a trend line to the time series plot it's just fitting a regression line. So we know we can fit that regression line on the um, on the scatter plot in the data and statistics page or we can do it from the table of values in the lists and spreadsheets page. Okay, so um, in the instructions there for both, which we should be quite familiar with by now. Okay, let's have a look at an example. So the forecast, the forecast equation for calculating share prices, which is Y dollars of a mining company, was obtained from data of share prices from the past four years. The equation is Y, so the share price, is equal to 18.57 minus 0.1T where t equals 1 represents the year 2010, okay? And so t equals 2 is the year 2011, etc. It probably um, should specify that time period a bit better in the question. Rewrite the equation in the context of the question. So using variables, okay? We're using the variables about the question. So we want share price. Why is the share price? Oops, sorry. Share price in dollars is equal to 18.57 minus 0 0.1 times the year, the year number, okay? So it's not 2010, we don't put 2010 into the equation, we put one. Okay, so again, we're introducing a code um, for the times like we did with the days of the week in the previous video, okay? So sometimes if you're dealing with data which represents years 2010, 2011, 2012, instead of using those numbers, you would use year one, year two, year three, year four, okay? Um, so it's possible to do both, but you'll probably find that entering a, creating a code for the time periods is quite common. Interpret the values of the gradient and the y-intercept. Okay, so gradient is negative 0.01, okay? Gradient, slope, same thing. Gradient is negative 0 0.1, sorry, I think I said 0 0.01. Negative 0.1. Um, okay, so our interpretation for that. Okay, so that that tells us, on average, and remembering that we need to be suitably vague, on average, um, each year, the share price decreases by. Um, 10 cents, 0.1 of a dollar by 10 cents. On average, each year the share price increases by, or is predicted to decrease, let's say that, the share price is predicted to decrease by 0 0.10. Okay, and the y-intercept so the y-intercept is 18.57. So remember, that's the value of the y variable, the share price, when the x variable, the year, is zero. Okay. So this means that um, uh, 
uh, now given that year 1 is 2010, year 0 must be 2009, okay? Um, the um, equation predicts that the share price in 2009, which is t equals 0, was approximately 18 dollars and 57 cents. Okay. Now I know it's weird to make a prediction in the past because you would know that value but the point is if this um, regression equation was based on data from 2010 onwards, you're creating the regression equation based on 2010 data, then using that equation to predict to um, forecast for 2009 is an extrapolation from that data and so we, th that might not be the actual price that might be the um, predicted price on the basis of the data that wasn't to do with 2009 at all. Predict the share price in 2019. Okay so t equals 1 is 2010. Um, so 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 2019 is t equals 10. Okay so we've got our equation which says that share price is equal to 18.57 minus 0 0.1 times the year number and this is year number 10 so 18.57 minus 0 0.1 times 10 means that we would predict $17.57. Now we don't have the data here, we don't know whether that's an extrapolation or an interpolation, we don't know R or R squared, so we don't know how reliable that prediction is. Um, but just thinking about how we can use the equation to make prediction, and again that same interpretation of gradient and y-intercept within the context. Okay, let's have a look at the second example. Apologies, so we've got a data set here. Sales figures of Harold Courtney's latest novel in thousands of units are given in the table below. The book was released a week before the first figures were collected. Um, so time in weeks, so uh, one week after one week, um, one week since the book was um, released, sorry, um, the sales are 1,000. Two weeks after the book was released, the sales are 3,000. Three weeks after the book was released, sales are 5,000. Four weeks, the book's got some traction, there's been some reviews published, whatever, the sales are now 17,000 in that week, okay? Um, so they're not cumulative sales, it is in week one we sold 1,000 books, in week four we sold 17,000 books. Enter the data in your CAS, okay so I've done that over here. Um, and find the least squares regression line in, in terms of time and sales. Okay so we could do that here in our data and statistics, uh, sorry our spreadsheets page while we're here, menu 414. My X list is time is weeks in this case and my Y list is sales. Okay so there's my equation so the sales times a thousand are equal to um, A which is negative 1.88 sorry negative 1.83 two decimal places plus 3.77 times um, the time in weeks so the weeks, I'll call that. So it's times the week number. Or weeks, whichever. You could, call, you could say time, brackets, weeks as well. Use your CAS to plot the time series data and the tre trend line on the same set of axes. Okay, so let's insert data and statistics page. Let's put our time on the horizontal axis and let's put our sales on the vertical axis. Um, time series plot so let's connect those points. Oh sorry I didn't mean to choose zoom. Yeah, number two. Um, okay and then plot the time plot the trend line. So do the regression here. So same as we do for a scatter plot menu four six two. There's my trend line and we're seeing it's the same equation that we found in the spreadsheets page. Use the trend line equation to predict sales for weeks 10, 12 and 14. Okay, alright so week 10 we would expect the sales times a thousand to be negative 1.83 plus 3.77 times 10. 
Okay, let's um, let's get a calculator page. Minus 1.83 plus 3.77 times 10. Um, okay, so it is 35.87 times a thousand, so that's um, 35,870 books in week 10 would be the prediction. Um, if you've don't forget, because we did the regression in our um, spreadsheet, we actually have function 1 um, defined as the equation, so you could do f1 of 10, but you're going to get a slightly different rounding there, 35.83. But again, um, we couldn't penalise you for working more accurately and using your CAS more efficiently. So week 12 means sales minus 1.83 plus 3.77 times 12. So if I go up to my previous calculation, just change the 10 to a 12, we finally get 43.41, so that is sales of 43,410 books, um, and in week uh, 14, we get our sales times a thousand, minus 1.83 plus 3.77 times 14, so again, Let's just edit that, change the 12 to a 14, 50.95. So again, use the trend line to predict sales. It's not clear um, whether that means the sales by a thousand or to actually work out what the sales are. So let's times this by a thousand. So that's 35,870 books in week 10. This is 43,410 books in week 12. This is 50,950 books in week um, 14. Comment on the suitability of the trend line as a predictor for future trends, supporting your arguments with mathematical statements. Okay, so what we notice here is that the trend line, and if we have a look at our plot again, the trend line is obviously a straight line with a positive gradient. So that means that's going to predict as time goes on, the sales increase every single week, okay? Which is actually not realistic. This is likely to be a sort of cyclical trend. We'll get a peak where the book's popular, lots of people are buying it, and then it'll drop on off. New books will come out. This author will release his next book, and people will move on to that. Um, and so the sales will drop off. So it might be a valid model. Um, so interpolation might be fine, and maybe fine, and maybe extrapolation for the next couple of weeks after this data set might also be fine. But at some point, the sales are going to actually decrease, and that's not catered for in this particular model. Okay, so um, uh, we might say here that the trend line predicts that sales will continue to increase indefinitely. Okay, and we can tell that because we have a positive gradient. Uh, which is unrealistic. This model can be used for interpolation and possibly for extrapolation slightly beyond nine weeks. but it is not a good model for future trends. Okay, so something along those lines of the fact that um, you know we're modeling the data within this nine week period and it fits that data really well, but but beyond that, it doesn't make any sense. 
um, sales are going to decrease at some point. We'll see some kind of um, drop off. Okay, so um, some of the questions one to three from exercise 6E and then the worksheet from Appendix D is your work for today.